I remember that ridge over there. Yeah. Town lies right over there in that big gap. You know, it was right around here I picked you up 12 years ago. <laughs> you was more dead than alive. I'll never forget that night, Dusty. Flash of guns, shouts of murdering men, and the courage of my dad. Shielding me and fighting a hopeless fight. Riddled with bullets, he fell across me whispering, lay still, Ted boy. They'll think you're dead. He didn't know I had a slug through my lungs. Well, when they rode up, somebody lit a match. And I laid still. And I heard somebody say, we got them both. And the match died out. And then somebody laughed. I'll never forget that laugh, Dusty. It was the laugh of a crazy man. A killer. Well, the next thing I knew, it was morning. I was in your arms. Yep. And I carried you all the way to Big Bend. For two years, I didn't know whether he was going to live or die. But you sure pulled through all right. We could just find some trace of my kid brother. Oh, it's doubtful. We did learn, however, that your dad had a hired man and his wife. I remember. The woman did the cooking and took care of Jim. You see, Dusty, my mother died when Jim was born. And he's the only relative I have. If he's alive. That hired man and his wife disappeared. We couldn't find hide nor hair of him. Finally, there was a feller moved on the ranch by the name of, uh... See, what was his name? Gentry, that's it, Gentry. But he didn't know nothing. Anyway, it ain't gonna do you no good living this all over again. We'll be in town tomorrow and we'll start our investigating. Hey, Dusty. I wonder who he is. Maybe we better open it. Hello, Gentry. This will introduce Gad Gans. He's just the man for the job you mentioned. 
Sorry I can't do it, but I got a couple of star packers on my trail. Gets plenty tough, as this enclosed poster will prove. Good luck, Bill. Gentry. Gentry? He's evidently planning a killing. Well, that's the fellow that got your dad's ranch. Certainly is funny, but you sure do resemble this bozo. Maybe fate's kind of taking a hand in this deal, Dusty. Maybe so. We don't know what this gentry's up to, but we're going to find out. What do you mean? I mean that from now on, I'm Get Gans, murderer. Mr. Gentry, my daughter and I have considered your offer for the ranch and have decided not to sell. We've developed the best spring in the country and someday hope to make this a fine ranch. I'll admit it's the water I'm after, Mr. Winters, and I don't blame you for holding on to it. However, this country is still wild, and rustlers are pretty numerous. That's why I've sold half the herd, and we're going to sell the other half next week. Excuse me just a moment, Mr. Gentry. Go ahead. Everything, Jacob, all right, Mr. Everything's Harvey? Everything's right. They're on their way. I think you'll find that's right, Miss Winters. That's quite right. Thank you so much, Mr. Hornby. Too late for the bank now, Dad. I'll have to deposit this first thing in the morning. I've got some two-year-olds I'd like to have you take a look at. All right. How do you do, Mr. Gentry? I'm very happy to see you, Miss Winters. Your father told me that you decided not to sell. That's right. We're quite happy here, and it's the kind of a ranch that Dad's always wanted. So why shouldn't we keep it? Well, if you're happy here, that's all that matters. As your neighbor, may I be permitted to call sometime? Why, of course. Dad and I will be delighted to have you. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello, Chief. Hi, Chief. Oh, hi, boys. Boys. All right, boys. Well, Winters refuses to sell. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but I'm going to force him. I'll ruin him. The Winters girl's leaving the ranch in the morning with a large sum of money. Now, Joe and Hank, I want you to get it. But remember, no harm has come to her. I'm going to own that ranch no matter what it costs. There you are, honey. All right, Beth, and I'll be right back. Be careful.
you hadn't have missed her, I'd have got her. Well, it ain't too late yet. Can't get her now. Why didn't you keep her when you had her? We never had her, you low code fool! Drop that gun! Are you going crazy? Cool down now before I sock you. Go on, try it, you pink-eyed weasel. Come on, get in your saddle. We gotta go tell the chief. and it's deserted. We can camp here temporarily. Hey, son, get up here, quick. Hey, son. Bullet hole. Fred Winters. Mighty curious, Tusty. We've got to hurry and get her to town. Well, let's take it easy now, son. We got her here just in time. A small artery's been severed. However, I don't think it's very serious. How did this happen? Don't know. We found her just outside of town. Our horse must have thrown her. We left our pack running loose. I reckon we better get going. Yeah, we may be back later. All right, boys. I know the young lady will be very grateful. You've probably saved her life. Well, listen, 
And I hadn't better be seen around here, so you take this money down and deposit it for her. And I'll meet you at the shack. Right. Tell your boss we couldn't catch her. She just outrode us, that's all. <laughs> well, I got another plan. Get back to the hideout. I'll see you tonight. Hello, Winters. Uh, this is Dr. Silsby. Your daughter wanted me to tell you she may be late getting home. She's met with a slight accident. No, not serious. I'll bring her out to the ranch a little later. Thank you. Who were the men that brought me in, Dr. Silsby? They said they were prospectors. It's lucky they found you. The small artery has been severed. And eventually you may have bled to death. As it is, there you are. Nobody will ever know that you had a scratch. I certainly am grateful, but did they say anything about money? Not a word. I had $3,000 on me to deposit, and it's gone. 3000 Your name Gentry? Yeah, I'm Gentry. We're from the border. Bill said to give you this. He'd have come himself, but he had a couple of star packers on his trail. So you're got guns, eh? That's what they call me. This is my friend Dusty. All right. Howdy. We always work together. Bill tell you what I wanted? No, he just said there was going to be some gun throwing. How much do you want for the job? Well, what's the job? There's a fellow I want to have disappear. Well, whatever you're going to give Phil will be okay with us. Hey, Dusty? Yeah. All right. I'll take you over to meet the boys. Gentry? Hello, Spud. Where's your dad? He's getting stuff ready for dinner. Where are the boys? They're over at the corral. Hey, Spud! Spud! Get in here and get to work. Hey, Spud! Oh, hello, boss. Hey, Butch. I want you to meet Gott Gans and his friend Dusty. How are you, boys? Hi. These boys have joined up with us for a while. Come on, I want you to meet the rest of the boys. Get in there! Get in there and get to work! Hey, boys. This is Gat Gans and his friend Dusty. Howdy. 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 They're going to be with us for a while. We've got a little job to do tomorrow night. You boys are taking all the winter's cattle. Herd them through the uh, pass into Round Valley. Plenty of feed there. We'll dispose of them later. You boys can watch the house. Winters will be sure to come out when he hears the racket. Now, he's the man you want, and you know what to do. But be sure it isn't the girl. We're leaving about midnight. Hank, show the boys to the sleeping quarters. Provisions, Chief. Yeah. Well, here's 50 bucks. And by the way, uh, Butch, we're taking Winter's cattle tomorrow night. You'd better get in on the drive. I'll be there, Chief. Okay. I'm riding back with you, Denny, to get my pack. Okay.
Hey, Spud. Come out here. Tell the boys to hitch up the buck, boys. You're driving to town for a vision. Is that uh, Winters a tough hombre? Just stubborn. I've tried to buy the ranch for two years. Now I'm taking it. Oh, hasn't he any relative? A daughter. I'm taking her along with the ranch. Oh, I see. Like a dime novel. We eliminate the old gent. You marry the gal and get the ranch. Is that it? <laughs> you guessed it. <laughs> go the way you always go. Don't ask any questions and don't answer any. And if you wait back by dark, I'll turn you good. Get going. Yes, Tony. Thank you. I got to be getting back. Well, thanks for the lift. Oh, that's all right. Oh, Dad. I lost the money. Never mind the money, dear. It's you I was worried about. We've got the rest of the herd to sell. That'll carry us through till spring. But tell me, Faye, what in the world happened? Well, you see, there were two men that followed me out of town. And that's the last thing I remember. But who could have found you in that shack? I don't know. Doc said there were a couple of prospectors. We sure had some rides, didn't we? Come on, son, let's go sit down and kind of pull ourselves together. I know what you was going to give me when I passed you. Oh, don't worry, Spuds. We're all right. You're safe. I know, but that's not what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking of what's going to happen to me when I get back. Butch will beat me. Oh, I'll have something to say about that. You can't stop him. No one can. They've tried it. Well, I'll get your provisions and go back with you and explain things. Don't worry. Your dad isn't going to whip you. Now, I 
was beginning to think I'd have to come in after you. Where are the buckboards? What happened? The horses got scared. I managed to stop them, but the buckboards wrecked. What about the provisions? They're in my pack. Here's your change. Get in the house. I told him that kid couldn't hold them horses. I've seen that fellow someplace before, Dusty. But I can't think where. If you ever whip that kid again, I'll break every bone in your carpet. Oh, all right, Ken. Let me go. He won't whip you again, Spud. You're the only friend I got. Gee, you can fight. I'll bet you busted his gizzard. <laughs> Gentry sent word that no one was to leave the ranch. And tonight, tonight, we're supposed to get winters. How are we going to warn him? Well, the only chance we've got is when we get there. You can cover the house from here. But remember, don't mistake the girl for the man. I'll get the boys started on the drive. Give me your knife, Dusty. What's wrong, Faye? I'm here, Dad. Look. Just that 
came through the window. What? It's our bank book. The lost money has been deposited. Don't come out. Don't strike a light. They're waiting to shoot you down. Your life's worth more than your cattle. Let them take them. A friend. They're stealing our cattle. I can't let them. Dad, don't you understand? They're waiting out there for you. You wouldn't have a chance. I saw the flash of a light. I'm sure they got the note. I don't think there's anybody home. Oh, that's mighty strange. Well, I've got the cattle anyway. Let's go. They're gone. And our cattle with them. Don't worry, Dad. Thanks to someone, we've got enough in the bank to carry us through. Go over to Winters and ask him for a job. He'll tell you about the cattle being stolen. Tell him you'll help trail them. I'm sure he'll take you up. When you got out of town, uh, well, uh, accidents happen. <laughs> That's a mighty smart idea, Gentry. You sure know how to work things out. Well, come on, Dusty, let's get this over with. And you're the owner here. Yes, I am. Now, could you use a couple of good cow hands? Well, I could have used you last night. Rustlers run off all my cattle. Well, they couldn't have gone far. Cattle has to eat, you know. Why don't you trail them? I phoned the sheriff, but he won't be back till this afternoon. Well, we'll make you a little proposition. If we bring your herd back, will you give us a job taking care of it? I sure will. Well, that's fair enough. You better go with us till we sight them, and you can come back and get the sheriff. We may lose your rustlers, but we'll sure get your cattle. All right, I'll saddle up right away. Oh, Miss Winters. Oh, good morning, Mr. Good Dante. morning. Is your dad around? Why, yes, I, I think he's over at the barn. I'd like to see him. All right. Good morning, Gentry. Good morning, Mr. Winters. Rustlers run off my cattle last night, and I've just hired these two boys to help trail them. But, Dad, that's too dangerous. I won't let you go. We'll take care of him, Miss Winters. When we sight the cattle, he's coming back after the sheriff. Oh. Oh, I see. Don't worry, dear. I may be late getting back, but I'll be here. Good luck. Oh. 
Oh, I do hope they find our cattle. In case your dad is late getting back, I'd be very happy to keep you company this evening until his return. Thank you, but I'm not afraid, and I wouldn't like to inconvenience you. Oh, that wouldn't be an inconvenience, Miss Winters. In fact, it's going to be a real pleasure. And here's the letter we got from Gans. Hello, Gentry. This will introduce Gat Gans. He's just the man for the job you mentioned. Sorry I can't do it, but I got a couple of star packers on my trail. Gat's plenty tough, as the enclosed poster will prove. Good luck, Phil. Gentry. Dirty snake. I don't know how I can ever repay you boys. I hate to think what would have happened if you hadn't taken a hand in this. Oh, shucks, Mr. Winter. We're glad to help you. The question is, what to do next? I got it. You go tell Gentry that we've disposed of Mr. Winters here. If he wants proof, take him out and show him again. And then... Go on, get out of here before I shoot the pants off you. Dusty's taking the shovel, but I guess I... Never can... mind that. Where is your partner? He's beat it for the border. We figured that the sooner we got out of here, the better. I suppose you want your dough. That's all I'm waiting for. Well, the bank's closed, but I'll have it for you at the hideout the first thing in the morning. Fair enough. I'll stay at the winner's place tonight. I got a few things I want to pick up. All right, but don't let the girls see you. I won't let anyone see you. Okay. got some good news for you. The Winters Ranch will soon be mine. Old man Winters is dead. Well, that is good news, I'd say. I'd hey, say it is, boy. I wonder what happened to him. And now we're going to collect $5,000 reward. $5,000? What do you mean? Yeah. Got Gans is at the Winters Ranch, but he'll be over here in the morning. There's a price on his head of $5,000, dead or alive. Dead men tell no tales. That's my job. I don't care who does the job, just so it's done. Pee-wee, they're gonna flag your tail out of here. They're laying for our friends, and it's up to us to tell them.
Why, Spuds, what are you doing over here? I come to tell you, they're going to shoot you as soon as you come to the hideout. Gentry says there's a reward for you, and he's going to get it. A double cross, eh? Well, uh, you don't have to worry, Spud. There's no reward out for me, and they're not going to get me. What's that? That was Aunt Marthy. She gave it to me when she died. Marthy? Yeah, she was Butch's wife. She was the only friend I had until you come. Marthy, Butch. Now I know where I've seen him. He and his wife worked for my dad. Say, Spud, did Ann Martha ever tell you about your father? She said he was dead and that Butch wasn't my real dad. She left me a letter and told me not to open it until I was growing up. Well, where is it? I brought this with me because Butch said he was going to shoot me and I ain't never going back there. Here it is. I'm going to open this, Spud. It may mean a lot to both of us. My dear boy, your real name is Jim Hayden. Your dad and brother were killed by Gentry and his gang when you were a babe. Don't think hard of me, son. I've had no hand in this. Aunt Martha. Jim. Jim, do you know what that means? It means you're my brother. My own little brother. Gee, ain't that swell? You know, boys, in a way, this isn't any great surprise to me. I've suspicioned Gentry for a long time, but I've never been able to get anything on him. Years ago, right after Hayden was killed, we suspected him of being the secret leader of a band of wrestlers, but we were never able to prove it. After reading that letter, there isn't a doubt in my mind but that he was guilty of Hayden's death. We've got enough on Gentry now. Why should we wait? Well, give Ted a chance to play his hand, Sheriff. He'll get word to us when he needs us. There's Gentry now. No matter what happens, son, stay right here. Miss Winters. I, I hardly know how to tell you, but this poster will speak for itself. And that isn't the worst of it. Word just came to town that they found your father. No, don't say it. Oh. Don't cry, <laughs> Faye. I want you to know that I'll take care of you. Why, I've, I've loved you since the first time I saw you. Please, Mr. Jeffrey, I... Won't you understand, Faye? I'm crazy about you. I'll give you everything you want. Please don't talk like that. Listen, I, I want you to be my wife. Oh, take your hands off. Take your hands off, Gentry. Phew. What have you done with my father? Your father's safe, Miss Winters. Call the sheriff. I'm holding this man for murder. Murder? My name's Hayden. Ted Hayden. Son of the man you and your gang murdered 12 years ago. You left me for dead, too, Gentry. But I lived. Lived to even up the score. Why, he's crazy. That poster proves who he is. Then call the sheriff, Miss Winters. Hello? Hello, give me the sheriff's office. You're mighty brave behind a gun, aren't you? Why? Hanging or shooting's too good for you, Gentry.
sheriff's office. This is Miss Winters. Is my... Yes, your father's here. He's all right. What's that? You'll be right over. Get your daughter, Winters. We'll have to hurry. When Dusty comes, lead him right to the hideout. Hi, right, Ted. I'll be all right, dear. Don't you worry. Hey, Dusty! Cat said to follow me! Come on, Winter! Ken, he's got himself in a trap. Give me that gun. Listen, Gentry. Twelve years ago, you killed my father, separated me from my brother, and took everything out of my life that a kid should have. And now I ought to give you what you gave my dad. But I'm keeping my hands clean, Gentry. 
I'm taking you to the law. All right, boys, let's riddle them with bullets. Why, it's Gentry. Not those iron men. Where's the man called Gann? He's in there. Well, boys. I've been trying to meet up with you for some time. I reckon you got here just in time, brother. Oh. What are you thinking about, Jim? You know, Ted and I are going to get our ranch back. And he said when you married him, it was going to be twice as big. Oh. He has it all worked out, has he? Sure, and you better accept his proposition. Because it'll be the only one you'll ever get. Well. What's my little brother been telling you? Well, I was telling him what you said you didn't have the nerve to. <laughs> Is my face red? Well, it oughtn't to be. Because Faye said she'd accept your proposition. Why, well, I... Gosh, now you're both burning up. I think your brother needs a good lecture. Lecture? He needs a good spanking.